they're always puppies puppies forever part of it was just trying to scratch an itch and be absurd the the not the clip the clip is dramatic at least for these dogs meet lenny and marpa pomeranian chihuahua mixes and this is their dad you've heard his songs played millions of times on tiktok and social media the cheese tax the cheese the creator of puppy songs matt hobbs our guest today on industry pets and welcome matt how are you doing today I'm doing great, Raj. Thanks for having me. Doing well. How did you get inspired to start writing puppy songs? Well, it started just by spending lots of time with my two dogs, Lenny and Marley. Um, and one of the things that happens with me is I spontaneously make songs about everything. I, uh, I especially am inspired to make songs uh, like singing what my two dogs are singing. So just in the wild, that's where the ideas came from. That's how most of the songs still start today. Just little improvised bits on behalf of Mar Pup or Lenny. That's awesome. So you kind of just, from the viewpoint of the dog, started jamming along and yeah. What made you press record? Well, it was a uh, it was a unique time. Uh, it was the beginning of 2020, and I was tinkering with this as a project. I wasn't taking it totally seriously yet. Uh, but I've been writing songs and performing songs. I do a lot of work in musical theater and I needed practice producing my own tracks just in general, just as a, as an artist and a, and a songwriter. And so I said, well, what if I made a bunch of really short songs and, and wouldn't it be absurd if I took the silly songs we sing with Marpup in the kitchen and took those all the way, like take them all the way, fully produced background vocals and to give me practice like mixing. Part of it was just trying to scratch an itch and be absurd. How do you get into that zone of tapping into what your dogs are thinking? I think I could speak on behalf of these two here. They are so expressive. They're two little dogs. So they're both Pomeranian Chihuahua mix and their personalities are so big. And I think it's their eyes. There's just, there's these expressions that like, you can almost tell what they're saying in these moments, whether their mood is skeptical or whether they're going nuts because the Amazon man's dropping something off or whether the Mar Pup is coming to very calmly and coolly collect the cheese tax or any food tax for that matter. Um, I think they're just, they're expressive and they're fun. And I don't know, I think what dogs, dogs operate on a very simple, authentic level. Like they have what they want. Um, they want those things. They're excited about the things they're excited about. They're very frustrated at the things they're frustrated about. Um, and they go all in. You know, they go all in and how they love you and how they attack somebody coming in the door or not attack, but just bark a lot and, and greet. Um, so, I mean, I think I think the at least in the case of these little two dogs, they're just so expressive and interesting. So they are 14 years old. How did they come into your life? So I met them when I met my wife. So my wife, I've, I've started hanging out with my now wife uh, seven, seven years ago. And so that's when I met them at their house. They were uh, very little white on their faces, but the same little personalities. And so um, I've been able to assume the role of uh, dad or puppy daddy, as I'm called in the household with these two dogs. And um, I'm really lucky that I've got the chance to meet them. My wife got them uh, when they were little. So I'm kind of made them halfway. I wish I would have known them when they were puppies. I wish I would have. The romance actually was helped by these dogs. It definitely provides like a lot of shared currency because it lets the two of us from an early time, even with the two of us being together, it lets us, you know, focus on taking care of something or just enjoying activities with the dog, like going out and enjoying being in the yard or just even simple things and inside jokes, right? It gets inside jokes going right away, <laughs> which at least for these two dogs happened as well. Do you think that you would be married now if she didn't have two cute dogs as well? <laughs> We'll never know the alternate version of that story. I don't know. I never would have thought about that. So what are the uh, cute nicknames that you have for Lenny and Mar Pup? Um, so Lenny goes by Lenny, Lenny Pup. She doesn't have a ton of names. A lot of which I usually use the voice when I talk to her. So Lenny, that's normally where that voice came from. It's kind of like the perfect thing. Marley is Mar, Mar Pup, which has even started to take over her real name, Marley. Um, she's also Mar Fluff, uh, and occasionally Mrs. Fluff. So those are some of their names. Not a lot of people know this, that Lenny and Mar Pup's names are already musical names. My wife's sister named them when they were little, right? So Lenny is short for, is, is inspired by John Lennon, 
which is really wild. So Marley's Marpup's name is Marley um, for Bob Marley. So it's uh, John Lennon and Bob Marley. They had musical names long before I was even on the scene, which is interesting and cool and like neat how the fate was aligned there. Which dog charges the most cheese tax? Oh, Marpup. Marpup, by far. She is the most, she supervises anything that happens in the kitchen and doesn't miss a payment, that's for sure. What are Linny and Marpup's top three treats? So another reality at this point is they're both on a, um, a veterinary diet. They can't really have much uh, in the way of like traditional treats. Otherwise things get pretty ugly uh, in terms of digestion stuff. So they Marpup gets her pills, her medicine in cheese. And a lot of times we still have to give Lenny a little bit just because we can't, we can't be uneven treatment. So a little bit of cheese is probably the only treat they get consistently. And when, when Marpup rejects the cheese for all the medicines she's on, um, occasionally we have to do a little bit of just like plain chicken, um, which we try to only give a little bit to Lenny too, because that can mess up her stomach. So the treat game, unfortunately, has um, has, has stopped over the last three or four years. What, yeah. uh, what did they used to go to town on with when they were in their heyday? Oh, uh, chicken jerky was the favorite like just dried chicken jerky treats i don't remember we used to get them from somewhere i don't know um and those little like uh like twisted up things with the little it looked like a like a like a kebab or something you know what i'm talking about i, yeah. I think we called them chewies i don't know it's been a while uh but those were probably the big two the chicken the chicken is actually the subject of a song um like the third puppy song ever is about lenny holding a piece of chicken with both of her paws and chomping on a chicken um so that was that was about when that stopped yeah are you planning to do any songs from an older dog's perspective yeah i think that's uh that's kind of what's happened organically along the way so over the last year there have been more songs about snoozing or from moments where the dog happens to be a little more sedentary or relaxing um you know i think thematically i'm trying to just stay true to the life they live in terms of narrating their little doggy lives um i also don't want to make them do anything that they don't want to do for video's sake you know i don't i don't mess with any of that which is why sometimes there's just no videos for a long time it's just like because they're not up for it one of the things i want to do is make a song about how no matter how old the dog is they're always puppies puppies forever and like because we still call them the puppies and it's puppy songs and i do a lot of things with the word puppy so that might be if i might like make a make one really good one about that perspective so what are Linny and marpup's top three toys marpup doesn't mess with toys she's not interested with toys she's more interested in like blankets and she has like three different beds all over the house where she can post up including one right behind me and these beds are huge these beds are intended for humans um lenny has uh, all the toys we get sent some toys she really likes a little yellow squash toy um she also has a pig that she really likes and she has a bunch of gingerbread men toys that she really likes um for a while, she used to destroy these bird toys that we had. And if you go back and look at our song, Destroy My Toy, which was, I don't know, 40 or 50 songs ago, um, you could see Lenny just ripping the stuffing out of a toy, which Marpup was never really into, which is always interesting. Do Lenny and Marpup like to stay inside or do they go to dog parks and hikes? They love being inside. Uh, they rally hard every day at about five for the puppy walk. Um, they hold us accountable for puppy walk. Uh, so they, they like to go around the neighborhood. They don't do well with other dogs. Uh, so dog parks off the table hikes. We can do like small hikes cause they have tiny feet. Um, but like no more than a mile or two max at this point, but they, they like, uh, there's a couple parks we go to around Atlanta that are nice and shaded that we can do like a nice little one mile loop. Um, but when we see other dogs, something crazy happens when Lenny tends to want to bark and engage the other dog and Marpup runs in the other direction afraid. So that's normally what happens when we encounter other dogs on hikes. If your dogs could turn human for a night and join you on stage, what instruments or, or roles would they play? Marpup. Marpup would be on a keyboard, maybe, maybe like an old Rhodes or Wurlitzer. 
and and on vocals. She's essentially Michael McDonald. Marpup would be being soulful, Michael McDonald, keys. Lenny, I think, would be a little bit more of like a like a dynamic uh, vocalist. You know, I'm trying to think of like t- like Tina Turner, just like the electric rock the mic covers. Like I'm thinking big energy. I'm thinking on the mic. I'm thinking covering ground, running around a huge stadium. She's probably not tethered to an instrument. I don't think she could handle it. I think she's got to be free to go wild. Whereas Marpup's a little more in the pocket, but giving us singing straight to our souls from the keyboard. I stand by those. That's it. That's totally what they would be. That band would be awesome. So what does owning dogs do for your mental health? That's a great question. Being an entertainer and working in entertainment, especially in the last three months post cheese tax has been a unique kind of uh, stress <laughs> with opportunities and challenges that have come up. Good things, but just a lot happening. And and having dogs, A, having dogs in my house and B, having them so embedded in this project, I think are good reminders for me to not take it too seriously um, and to stay grounded because they still are going to demand a puppy walk at five, even if I'm still in the middle of something that's stressing me out. Um, and they still demand, you know, snuggles when we sit on the couch or they still, like, I, I don't know. I think it keeps you grounded and keeps you focused on what matters, like a connection with a companion and love. It's hard to be mad or frustrated or stressed when Marpup's just like sitting on you or when Lenny is demanding that we go attack the neighborhood on a lap. So, I think they I think they help a lot with balance for sure. Can you give us three tips for anyone that may be thinking about owning a puppy? From my experience, I would say um, you know, be open, be flexible, don't take anything too seriously. Roll with it. I think uh, another tip and I think about this every day is like don't miss any opportunities. Um, I try not to know. I, I mean, I have two 14-year-old dogs and one of them is on four heart medications. I don't want to miss a single opportunity that if they want to go on a walk it's going to literally take 12 minutes we just go around the block i'm not going to miss it like be present show up and soak it up because it's um you know it's all borrowed and it's all a gift the time at least uh and then the little toenail uh the like the shaver the the one not the clip the clip is dramatic at least for these dogs but the little like it spins and it's got the that was a game changer for us in terms of getting uh, fingernails and toenails uh, accounted for in the grooming world. Uh, So that's two philosophical and one practical. That's what I thought of. (laughs) Love it. I just wanted to say thank you for making millions of people smile every day. I mean, I just that's a mission of ours is to try to make someone smile. But I mean, you literally do that every day. And I hope you understand how awesome what you put in the world is so thank you for doing that well thank you for that by the way that's really kind uh this project helps keep me sane and grounded for sure um and it means a lot that over the years i've been really fortunate to find a community of folks who enjoy the same silly stuff that i do it's a special thing that i never would have imagined happening so thank you for following along and helping share the story and for the kind words you tell everybody where they can find you it's, it's puppy songs everywhere uh we're on TikTok and instagram that's where the videos happen that's where you might see you know the new songs the old songs the acoustic versions new videos with old songs everything in between um puppy songs also has uh, a presence on spotify apple music and wherever you stream and and on Amazon. So something I've noticed is a lot of folks request cheese tax or puppy walk through their Amazon uh, Echo Alexa. I guess they're like in the kitchen. It's like play cheese tax. So if you if you need a puppy song soundtrack in a certain moment, you can find us wherever you need to stream, wherever you stream music. Um, at least there's 30 of the main songs are there. And then uh, I'm doing some live shows. Well, I'm booking as many as I can for the end of the year. But Los Angeles is happening. I'm hoping to do another Atlanta show soon. Um, Nashville is we're close. We're just not there yet. Hopefully a Nashville show and hopefully get back to New York where we have a lot of friends by the end of the year. So stay tuned to the socials for tour stuff as well. Matt, thank you so much for for this. Really, really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today on Industry Pets. Well, thanks for having me. It was a blast.